Are you having a nice day? I'm having a good day. I'm having a brilliant day. Yeah. What does the finds team do? <sighs> what don't we do? <laughs> Through the day, well, we've got a range of different types of finds to deal with. So we'll have bulk finds trays, which need to be cleaned and processed. And then we've got small finds, which need to be logged and um, checked, measured. measured. Yeah. What happens when something comes in? So when something comes in, it goes into the incoming finds table. And then the first thing we do is we look for anything that came into the tray during the trench, which is actually nothing like little stones when people weren't sure if it's actually something. And um, then it gets cleaned. Then it gets cleaned, um, and then once it's dry, it gets weighed and counted, sorted by material, then bagged, so it's ready for the specialist. Do you prefer finding the object or cleaning it? That's really it depends difficult. on the object. <laughs> if it's the kind of object that comes in where you can't really see what it is, it's amazing to clean it. It's like a whole other process of discovery. Absolutely. And obviously when you're in the trenches, it's the same thing, but just on a really big scale. So, But the good thing is that in the trench, you never know if you find something, whereas in here, you always find something. <laughs> so. It is the fine room. It is the it fine is. room. But there is always something that you uncover that wasn't something, that, that looked like maybe just a piece of mud, and then in the end, it turns out to be something quite exciting. So that's good. Yeah. So for example, just something that came out today just this key and um, it looked like just an iron ring and like a clump of mud but we cleaned it up and it actually looks quite nice so that's just one of the examples <laughs> I can hold it if you want it looks good it's like an advanced selfie <laughs> If we move behind it, can we make it make it our smile? <laughs> who, who, who thought of those questions? Everybody in the trenches. These are questions oh. from the dig team, especially wow. for you. Wow, look at that. They do care. How do you clean a medieval coin? How did we what? How do you clean a medieval coin? Yeah. Um, we just very carefully, we used to cotton bud and we just put a very little water on it and then we just tap the coin just try to get rid of any soil yeah. but very gently not a lot of water um, that's how we do it yeah what is the conservation process for the copper rings well that is slightly more complicated um, and what we do here on site when we're processing finds is really um, clean the material that can be cleaned through uh, and make sure that we quantify it and we know how much is coming from each context. When we've got really special finds, like the copper rings, those need to undergo a much more specialist process. So what we'll do here is just record it and then it will go to a conservator to go through. This one's slightly different as well because as well as the two copper rings, we've also got a human bone within the um, find as part of the group. And that's been... Um, affected by the copper rings so the bone itself has gone green as well through the process of um, the copper corrosion what the conservator will do is clean the object using chemicals effectively and stabilize it and then in that stabilization process we'll also prevent it from corroding further so we don't do that here we send it to somebody but what we do do we put some silica gel in with it as well and put it into an airtight box so that there is no more moisture on. Yeah, so we, we pri aim to prevent further corrosion happening exactly. until it gets to a conservator. <laughs> and, then it, and then it's in their hands. <laughs> How do you maintain order when there are so many finds? Oh, yeah, Hannah. Um, <laughs> by shouting at everyone who messes up my order. No, it's basically, it's, ve it's very important to have one place <laughs> where all the fines go that come into the fines room. So I have one table that says incoming fines. And then I have another table that has all the dry fines. And when there are new trays coming in, I always try to merge them together. So if I have something from the same context, I do that because otherwise I get swamped with trays. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not easy. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's very overwhelming, but 
you just need a system and people to stick with it. <laughs> Good or bad for the Vines team? Oh, that's a tricky one. That actually ties into the previous question because when there is rain, a lot of people come in here and um, they walk around and take trays and there are just a lot of people and that means that the order is going to be a bit disturbed. But on the other hand, we get a lot clean. We do. What we need to do here is get everything clean so it's More hands order on versus cleaning. <laughs> If you could have one magical test to use in the finds room, what would it be? A test? I would say dating. If we could, if we could pinpoint anything on any type of find, then it would tell us what date it was. That'd I, be amazing. Does it have to be a scientific test? Mm. I would I think love so. to have a camera that takes a picture of the object and shows you the picture of the last person that touched it before it came to the ground. Well, then can we have a time machine as well? And then we could go back and ask people how they we... made the finds. Okay, fine. That's not a test, though. That's a machine. Okay, but is that what you mean? Okay, <laughs> so there we go. Time machine and special yeah. camera. <laughs> What's the most exciting thing you found this week? Uh, well, we only really found... Well, we only really found the key in the mud. In the finds room. So, yeah. But I think... Oh. I really like the finger. I really like the finger with the two rings around it oh, because yeah. there is a story behind it and having a personal object mm. on a bone is, is, quite, is quite special because you start thinking about the person yeah. much more because there is a, a link, a personal link. I really like our fragment of name stone. And this is something as well that, that was further enhanced through the process in yeah. the finds room because on cleaning it we found much more detail around the potential for the um the rooms the rooms and again it has that personal element to it because you've got a link with a personal name and they're such beautiful objects and it's good to find them in an archaeological context and what's the least exciting thing that you've found <gasps> that's a terrible question <laughs> who asked that <laughs> no names. <laughs> the least exciting okay. object is all the mud that comes in with the fine trays, all the stones that are that are the fines. Exactly, <laughs> that have crosses on them because all they did was weighing down the fine trays. Um, <laughs> I, you can't really say. I mean, everything is interesting because if you actually think about it, everything tells us something. So we can't be partial. <laughs> you have to be. What do you think about when you're cleaning? <gasps> oh, what do you think about when you're cleaning? I, I usually talk. So I think to the fines. <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> I think you. I think you think about whatever is just. The good thing about cleaning is you can kind of switch off your brain, so you can just concentrate on the cleaning and think of whatever comes to mind. Yes. And. Uh, it's good to have a couple of people with you as well when you clean so you can talk and then the conversations go from actual archaeological topics mm. to anywhere. Anywhere. What can the field team do to make your life easier? <gasps> There's a list. Use the processes. <laughs> Follow the instructions. Do what label, they're told. Label your trays. <laughs> label your finds bags. Take the weight stones out of the trays before you bring them in. Merge trays already mm -hmm. on site if they have the same context number. And uh, check your handwriting when you're writing bags. We seem we seem so, like such un nice people. Can I have a biscuit? <laughs> yes. Can I have a biscuit? So you are nice people. Yes. Which one would you like? One of these? Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, everyone who comes in here always gets big biscuits. We never t say no. We never say no. That is biscuits. actually a nice thing about the finds room. We are very welcoming. Are you lonely in here? No. Are we lonely? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite sport? My favourite sport? <laughs> Tennis. <laughs> Tennis? Yeah. I didn't know that about you. Yeah. That's cool. See, we never talk about sport in the finds room. <laughs> 
Oh, cricket is a, is a, is a topic, but I don't get cricket. <laughs> I don't understand it. Sorry for all the cricket lovers out there. What do you do with all the incomplete skeletons and jumbled bones? <gasps> wow, they get treated um, in the same way as other objects as they come through. So we still need to know how many pieces, um, what they are specifically, how much they weigh from each context. They so, get cleaned as well. Yeah, yeah. so in, in that sense they get treated in the same way as the articulated skeletons. It's just with a complete skeleton you would always treat it as the individual together. Um, and with the other material, what we're trying to find out is how many individuals it represents and see if there's any way that we can link up things between um, those different groups. And we can also still, still get information from the teeth, for example, or yeah. from, from other bones that are quite intact. Mm -hmm. Will you reassemble anything? In terms of objects, if we had something like a broken uh, pottery vessel, mm -hmm. then yeah, we might then reassemble something. Really what we do within the context of the finds room is get it to the point where it goes to a specialist after that point it would then go um, to a museum or those sorts of um, if it's on view if you like that's that's where you might bring something together sometimes we do because it's fun it's like a jigsaw we like jigsaws in archaeology oh yes we do should you link it no <laughs> johanna <laughs> i didn't i did <laughs> what <laughs> Well, <laughs> I've, been, <laughs> I've been told that bone sticks to your tongue if you're licking, but you probably shouldn't do it. But it's good to know. It's a good little fact to know. If you don't know if it's bone or stone, you could, but you shouldn't. Don't. Don't. <laughs> What's your favourite part of what you do? I like it when everything is done and organised. I wanted to say that. <laughs> Um, oh, how did you get into fines? I didn't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> it was well, I didn't have a choice, but it all turned out well because I like it. So it was my internship with the Adventures when I started with the Adventures, and nobody was doing the fines, so that was what needed to be done. So I was just put into the fines room, told to get some order into it, and that's what I did. And then I kind of got stuck, and I realised that that's what I like to do, and here I am. Fate. Fate. And mine was similar actually. I started um, on a big research excavation and we had lots and lots of finds coming through and we were just asked if anybody wanted to help in the finds room. So I started doing what our volunteers and other finds team do by just cleaning finds and then getting addicted to them. Mm -hmm. What's the most complicated item you've ever had to clean? Oh, you go with that. I don't know off the top of my head. I think maybe one of the most complicated things I had to clean was the um, was a big broken cremation vessel, um, and we've had an, another one from a different site yes. where you've got lots and lots of different pieces, and it's very very um, fragile. If it's very early prehistoric pottery, for example, it's not been fired very well. So it's not complicated because of all the nooks and crannies. It's more because you're trying to clean something without removing any of the information at the same time or without affecting the find. Yeah, I agree. And what's the easiest thing? <laughs> this would be a good example. <laughs> this is actually a really nice example of a home stone, but it is a stone, which means it's actually quite an easy thing to clean. And, and you can't really break it. And you can't break it. And which do you prefer? The complicated things. I like a challenge. Most of the time. Yeah. If I have time, I like a challenge. Do you wear gloves? Sometimes. Yeah, it depends. The thing is, if you wear gloves, then you can't, you can't feel very well. So it's yeah. actually quite good to have, to have your yeah. fingertips to... Yeah, we don't need to. I mean, yeah. at this level of the fines room as we're coming through, you don't need to wear gloves to handle stuff. Um, so it's really only... it's. It's kind of your choice if you want to or not, but yeah, what Johanna said is right. If you, if you lose the ability to kind of feel what you're cleaning, then sometimes that's uh, not helpful to the process. What's it like to clean teeth? Mm. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a very humbling and interesting process because on the one hand, if you have, 
if you have animal teeth, for example, it's it's quite nice because they clean very nicely, mm-hmm. and you get you, <laughs> satisfying. You can, it is it is very satisfying because you can just clean them, and they actually most of them become white, and it's nice. But if you have human teeth, and especially if you have um, them still in the skull, then it's a very it, it's very touching to do it because this is the closest that you can get to imagining how they would have looked like um, when they were alive and if they had like a little gap in their teeth or something like this or if you see that they have um, bad teeth or mm-hmm. something and you kind of imagine the pain that they must have been in. So yeah, it's it's interesting and it's very touching to do. What's your favourite song? Song? We once had a Bohemian Rhapsody cleaning session in the fines room, which I will never forget, which was really great. We should do that again. We should do that again. That should be the... <laughs> if you could keep one artefact, what would it be? From these? Oh. I think I would actually like to keep... Hmm. The biscuits? I was going to say the biscuits, maybe. <laughs> No, I think I would like to keep the name stone with the Celtic pattern on it. Yeah, I think I'd like to keep our Ethelred the First coin. All about money with you. All about money. Where would you put it? In a box. <laughs> Under your bed? <laughs> Under my pillow. It could be from the Tooth Fairy. If you could leave one personal artifact for archaeologists to find, what would it be? Um... It's very hard. Maybe my panda earrings. Something that we're wearing today, you mean? Have to be, that's the most personal thing I'm wearing. I think leaving a diary would be quite cool. But a that diary? Not, but it needs to be sealed properly so it doesn't... Or maybe a finger with two rings on. <laughs> Do you want to hear? <laughs> Have you ever broken anything? <gasps> um, in cleaning, yes. Pottery. Some really fragile pottery. Yeah. Sometimes when you're cleaning something, it's the mud that's holding it together. So things will break. Yeah. That's, it's, that's okay. What they, happens if you break something? <sighs> don't panic. You, yes, don't panic. Just keep the pieces together. Clean them one by one. Because in the end, most of what we find has already been, was already bro- uh, broken mm-hmm. in the first place. So don't panic. Smile. Mm-hmm. Get back on the horse. Do the next one. <laughs> What was your worst guess at what something was? Oh, usually when I say something is a stone, but then it's metal. And then I say it's metal, but it's a stone. It usually happens in order, chronologically. You know what I mean? I never get it wrong. Oh, come on. (laughs) What about that piece where you said it's a stone and it was a bone? Okay, maybe when I did the stone and the bone thing. How many cups of tea do you drink each day? None. Because I do not comply to the tea culture. I could finish this bag of tea maybe in a week. So let's say, I don't know, 100 bags a day. (laughs) Do you dream about what you cleaned the previous day? Well, you can do. Especially if you spend an entire day cleaning one or two objects. Yeah, Yeah. you can do. Is it a dream or a nightmare when you do? Depends on if it's recurring or not. <laughs> Why are you so scary? <laughs> Who asked that? <laughs> I'm not scary. That one's to you, Hannah, though, isn't it? Yeah? <laughs> that is such a mean question. I'm not scary. I'm German and I'm efficient. <laughs> and I'm actually quite nice. <laughs> Would you have another to... biscuit? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even let me finish. You can have this one here. <laughs> You can have this one. And last question. Yes. Have you seen the latest discovery that the time that the team have made in the field? What is it? In situ nose down. <gasps> Are no. you kidding? Maybe, maybe in situ. Do you want to see a photo? Yes. Can we go then? No. Are we done? <laughs> you wait for it to come to you. <laughs> but then it's not in situ anymore. Wow. Oh my God. See, that's going to look nice. Which way around? You can actually see no, the writing on it. So we have seen it now. We have. We can't wait to get it in. Yes. Into the incoming so quick. table. <laughs> <laughs> quick. Bring it in, bring it in. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Oh. You now have to think what my film face is, and I don't know what it is, and I'm confused. <laughs>